Hello and welcome to the Edges of Earth. My name is Brock. Today I want to discuss the pros and the cons of being a backpacker in India. So I've been traveling in the north for about nine months now. I feel pretty comfortable walking around the city and even in villages. Now before I start talking, I want you to be aware that I absolutely love India. It is at the top of my list out of many countries that I have traveled to. And just because I'm discussing cons does not mean I dislike India. I love India. So let's first dive right into the cons. Let's begin. So as you know, there's a lot of garbage in India. The water and the land is quite dirty. So the general culture in India is that if you buy something, you drink it, you eat it, and after you're done, you simply throw the garbage on the ground. And that's basically the normal culture. And then later that evening or the next morning, someone comes along and sweeps the ground. But the problem with this culture is that the wind blows things into the water or away from the sweeping area and it goes wherever it wants. And, and so everywhere you go, every piece of land, every water that you will visit, you will find tons and tons of garbage inside. In fact, I remember standing on different bridges throughout India and just in a few moments that I was on bridges, I would watch people bring garbage, heaps, bags and bags of garbage and they'd walk to the middle of the bridge and just throw it over and watch it all fall and spread out all over. It either floats everywhere or it finally sinks to the bottom depending on the type of garbage. And this was just person after person after person just throwing it right into the into the river. So unfortunately, garbage is a problem. That's a downside to traveling here. You're going to come across so much garbage. Now there's a lot of animals in the streets, dogs, cows, goats, and a lot of them just wander the streets and urinate everywhere and do their business in the streets. And people also do the same. You'd be shocked to see how many people walk into the corner or just pull it out and, and go right on the street, right where everybody walks. And unfortunately, because of that, the streets are quite dirty when you walk. So that is a thing that is not really prevalent in many other countries. As a backpacker, obviously I love to travel and I, I love to travel to different villages or towns or cities. And sometimes people are just too curious. I love the curiosity of the people, but sometimes it's too much. I want to travel from point A to point B, but unfortunately, so many people will stop me that it is almost impossible for me to get to my destination. And if you reject them and say, no, 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 I have, I have to go, then they will sometimes feel like you are disrespecting them. So there's this weird balance of wanting to say hello and, and being kind and giving them some time to talk to you, but you also have plans and you have to be somewhere and do something or explore somewhere and you cannot stop and talk to every single person. So you unfortunately have to reject so many people because so many people want to talk and it's just impossible to talk to everyone. So you will make some people happy by talking to them, but you're going to reject so many of them and unfortunately now they do not like you. Some of the questions that people ask are really weird and it, it's not just one or two questions that I've been asked. This is, a this is a consistent thing in India. Many people will meet you, oh hello, what is your name? Where are you from? How old are you? Um, what is your mother's name? What kind of job does your father have? So these are just weird questions that you would not really ask. It's a different culture, I understand. So be aware that when you meet new people, they will almost always ask you these strange, sometimes personal questions. It's, it's equivalent to me asking you, how much do you weigh after meeting you 20 seconds ago? It's a very repulsive question, and many of the questions that Indian people will ask to you are going to be also repulsive. It's like too private. Within 20 seconds, people want to know if you're married. People want to know what your sister's name is. Oh, please show me a picture of your sister. Like, why do you want to see a picture of my sister? Like, no. The selfie culture here is insane. Everybody wants a selfie. People will always come up to you and make an excuse. Uh, what is your name? Where are you from? Just to have this moment of friendship and then they will take out their camera and they will push their cheek almost against yours and then take a selfie with you without even asking permission or even knowing who you are and you don't know who they are. It, you feel like an animal at a zoo. It really is weird. In our culture, the only time I would want to take a photo with someone is if I really know someone and we are friends. Hey, let's take a photo and remember this day, this moment. But for them, it's just like, you're a foreigner, so I'm going to take a picture with you so I can share it on social media and share this with all of my friends. From our perspective, it's a really, really weird thing and it happens 25 times a day. 
and they don't just take one photo, they will take 100 selfies with you. And when you say, no, I'm finished, they will pull your arm back in and they will make you take more photos. And it's, this process is very repulsive, again, and it's just not something that most foreigners like. So that is a thing that you will come across a lot. Sometimes you're walking from point A to point B and someone tries to be really, really friendly to you and come to my house for tea or a meal or something. And if you have a little free time, you kind of do this, but sometimes it's a little bit weird because now they will take out their phone and talk to all of their friends, call so many friends and say, hey, I'm with a foreigner, hey, I'm with a foreigner. They will take you to their house and then many people see you and everybody wants to take a photo of you and you just feel like nothing but a piece of meat, an animal, a dog on a chain, just so he can walk around and show you off and every time they ask, oh, how do you know? Oh, he's my friend, he's my friend. And that's what they'll say. It's just really weird. So this is a con to me. I see from their perspective, maybe they're trying to be friendly, but from our perspective, we feel like an animal, a dog on a leash, and like a new puppy that you're trying to show off to all of your friends. Cheating in India is unimaginable. You buy some drinks and some food, the total is 200 rupees, you give them 500, but you get 250 back instead of 300. And they say, oh, thank you, finished. When you look at the change, you realize you were cheated by 50 rupees. And you say, where's the remainder of my money? They'll say, oh, sorry, sorry, I forgot, I forgot, you're right. And let me go and get that for you. And then they will go out and hand you the correct amount of money. But how did you know how much money to give me if you didn't know that you were cheating me? This happens so many times, and I will go on a limb to say, in the tourist areas, about 50% of the shops will cheat you. 50%, and that's huge. Outside of the tourist areas, villages, other places, it's about an 80-20 rule. 80% 80 is honest, 20% cheats. Know the prices, count it, and make sure you're not getting cheated. Rickshaw drivers will come across the street just to get you to go into their taxi. They don't do that for local people. Why? Because they know if they can get a foreigner in their rickshaw, their tuk-tuk, they're going to cheat you and that's a lot of money for them. Basically, anyone who is approaching you for business, chances are they're going to try to cheat you, so just reject them, stay away. If you want business, go to someone and ask for their business. I always ask the local prices to local people before I make a purchase so I know what the correct price is and I know if they're cheating me or not. And if they're cheating, I just walk away. And then they will come back and say, no, 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 lower price, lower price. Nope, you cheat me once, no business. I will go to your competitor and talk to him. There's been examples where I lived in an area for a month and I went to a shop to buy something. He cheated me, so I went to his neighbor to buy the same thing. And every day I would go to his neighbor, I would walk past and look at this man and know you're a cheater and I will do business with this man over here. And so every day he realized how much business he lost from me because he cheated me once. So the difficulties to getting a SIM card, a local SIM card, is very difficult in this country. You're a foreigner, so you must be dangerous, so we must take extra precaution. There's three major companies, Geo, Airtel, and Vodafone. Geo, if you're a foreigner, you cannot register an account. I asked the company, they said no, it's forbidden. Airtel, you can, as long as you're a house owner. So I walked in, tried to get a SIM card. They say, yeah, no problem, fill out tons of paperwork. And one of the questions was, what is the home address in your home country? Well, I don't have an address because I don't own a house. I I live out of a backpack and I travel the world. And he says, oh, sorry, you don't own a house. You cannot get a SIM card. So that was out of the question. I never went into Vodafone, so I'm not sure. On a couple of occasions, I've had friends who went and got a SIM card from their own account and just simply gave it to me. So hopefully you make a couple of friends who can do that for you. It is a difficult thing to acquire a SIM card if you want to do it yourself. Transportation difficulties. So transportation can take you anywhere in the country, far, near, it's everywhere. Rickshaws are everywhere, buses are everywhere, trains are everywhere, planes. To get from point A to point B is generally an easy, smooth process. But to be able to get a ticket is another story. So as a foreigner, I've tried to get a train ticket and you know, you, 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 you try to go to the train station, but you can't get a local price. They'll charge you 150 rupees. I say, ah, the local price is 50 rupees to go from here to here. And they say, no, 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 150, 150. And so if you don't pay that, they refuse your business. They say, nope, sorry, we will not give you the local price. You must pay 150. So then you take a rickshaw to go to the train station. You get to the train station, you wait in line 20 minutes, everybody's 
cutting in front of you and pushing and pushing. Finally, you get up there. She says, oh, no, sir, you're at the wrong window. Go to that window. So then you walk over, wait in another line for 20 minutes. The woman keeps looking at you, looking at you. Finally, when you get up, she says, nope, sorry, you're a foreigner. I cannot sell you a ticket. You have to go to a completely different train station. So then you walk outside. Oh, sorry, sir, that train station is 300 rupees to take you there. When the locals say, no, it's only about 50 or 60. You see, so the whole process is unbelievably difficult to, to, to buy a train ticket. You should be able to just walk up, give them cash, they give you a ticket, done. It's so easy, but the, the big concern is safety. They gotta get your information to make sure India is safe. But the reality is that paperwork isn't going to do much about safety. All I can say is try to get a local person to help you get a train ticket one to three days in advance if you plan on going a far distance. If you're going a short distance, buy a general ticket, hop on and go. Usually you can find the train station and the bus station on Google Maps. Rickshaws are a bit different. There's a lot of what's called ride shares. Now you can take a personal rickshaw almost anywhere within a city. They will charge you more because you're a foreigner, a lot more. And there's also shared rickshaws but those are difficult because of the language barrier and plus you don't know where to search for them because there's no real label on a map. But assuming you know a couple words in Hindi and you know where the rickshaws generally hang out, yeah, just get on, do a share all the way to the destination you want to go. Just know the price before you get in. Never get in and go because they will demand a much higher price and they will force you to pay that price. So always ask the price before you go. And what's even better is ask local people who are standing around there who know the local price so the rickshaw driver cannot cheat you. Wi-Fi is sometimes difficult to find. Sometimes you'll go to hotels and you'll pay a premium at a, and stay at a nice hotel, but their internet is terrible. Usually the Wi-Fi can be fast. It's just the hotel just wants to be cheap and say, yes, we have Wi-Fi, but it's really not very fast. There have been a few times where I sat at hotels and the Wi-Fi was great, incredibly fast, but it really is a rare thing. Um, it could be because I don't really generally travel to the tourist areas. I kind of stay outside of the tourist areas, and that could be one of the reasons why it's a bit difficult. Most most people do not have Wi-Fi connections in their house, they rely on their mobile phone. And the last one I want to discuss is food cleanliness. If you're from a Western country, you basically know the standards. In this country, the standards are significantly lower than the West, both in a regular restaurant and on the street. In the regular restaurant, things are usually much better. You usually don't have to worry at all about cleanliness, but sometimes it's concerning if you can see them behind in the kitchen. But generally, it's pretty safe. Street food, I mean, you watch food exposed, flies everywhere. They'll cook the food, put it out. Flies are walking all over the, the food. And then when you walk up and want to buy that thing, they will just give you the food that has been sitting there for 25 minutes, swat at the flies to make them leave, give you the food that has been sitting there collecting dust from all the cars that are going by. So the concept of keeping food clean is a little bit different here than what we would expect back home. So enough about the cons, let's talk about the pros. First, I just wanna say the people of this country are generally awesome. People are so friendly, so hospitable, so curious, and so helpful. So many times I've been offered to go into someone's house or stay at their house so I did not have to pay hotel charges or eat a meal at their house so I didn't have to go to a restaurant or invited in someone's house to have tea. So many times, after you've become a friend for a day or two, people help you buy a ticket to a different city, a different town, and without them telling you, they already paid for it in advance. They just want you to get on and go, and when you try to give them money, they refuse. So people will actually give you so much time, they will help you, and in some instances, they give you money. People, in general, are very friendly. The landscapes in this country are amazing. Just take a train anywhere. Looking out the window of the train between point A and point B is usually awesome. You see some very beautiful scenery. There's also many tourist places that you can go that are just mind-blowingly beautiful. Again, I usually stay away from those areas, but they exist. Sometimes the architecture is amazing, sometimes the landscape is amazing. There's a lot of cool things to see in this country. One of the main reasons I traveled here is to understand the culture of the people. So in this country, there's so many different cultures and so many different types of people. It is awesome. People think very different here. People do very different things in this country. Sometimes can be very weird from our perspective, but to me, that's why I traveled here. I came here to be a part of this, to understand it, to witness it. And so for me, it's amazing. 
amazing. I love understanding more about the Indian culture. Transportation is quite accessible. Sometimes getting to the transportation or understanding where the transportation is in the first place is a bit difficult, but once you find it, once you get a seat, transportation is usually pretty smooth. English in this country is quite prevalent. I was actually shocked when I came here. Whether you're in a big city, a small town, even a small village, you'd be surprised how many people will randomly approach you and they will start speaking to you in English. Sometimes it's choppy English, sometimes it's quite impressive. As a traveler, it's very, very helpful because I've been in countries where English is not a thing and it is difficult. You rely on body language and a lot of smiles to get you from here to there. But in India, it's, it's not difficult at all. I've had elderly men talk to me for a long time in English and I've had little children who came up to my hip and they were speaking great English similar to a child in my own country. So it really makes it easy to, to travel this country. Food, hospitality, and transportation is generally inexpensive. In fact, it's one of the cheapest countries I've ever traveled in. Just to give you an example, I went to a four-star hotel and restaurant, and eating with three people, the bill came to about 750 rupees. If you buy general train tickets, they're generally super cheap, and sleeping in a hotel, from a Western perspective, it can be super cheap as well. So that is a big plus to backpacking this country, is you don't have to spend a lot of money, especially when you travel like a local. And the last big pro of this country is the length of a visa. This is different for everyone. I'm an American, so fortunately, I have the ability to get a 10-year visa in this country, and I don't think there's a lot of other countries who have that option. So I feel very, very fortunate that I can stay in this country and travel in this country for quite a long time. India does make it pretty easy to get inside, so that is a big plus as a traveler. So that's it, that's pretty much the big ones for me as a backpacker. I hope that if you're interested in coming to this country, this kind of gives you a little bit of information and it helps you a little bit. If you've been in India and you're a traveler, feel free to comment below and let me know some of the things that I missed. I would love to hear from you, write as many comments as you want. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you all for watching and remember, your time is running out. Start living. Take care.